Lord Jesus, we thank you for your kindness. We thank you for the gift of music. We thank you for the gift of praise. And most of all, we thank you for the gift of your spirit. Yes, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord Jesus, that as we listen to your word, we may be quick to do your will. We may be quick to come back where we failed. Quick to rise up and be like the righteous. They may fall many times, but they continue rising. Bless your people this, this day, Lord. This Sabbath, we thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Let's turn in our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 5. John, chapter 5, verse 39. And this is going to be the backdrop of our lesson today. For those that have read the, the book of Daniel, chapter 2, who's read it? Okay, good. If you've done it, if you've read it, you going to benefit because I cannot um, tell you everything in the book Daniel chapter 2 every day you will need to spend some time with the book of Daniel every day after our seminar or rather before the seminar you need to look at the book just one chapter a week and you'll find that you're getting familiar with the book and all I'm going to be doing is just doing some review and having a look at what the whole Bible says with regards to the subject. Let's go and have a look at John chapter 5, verse 39. And the Bible says in the book of John chapter 5, verse 39. It says, did I say John chapter 5, verse 39? Yeah. You diligently study the scriptures... Because you think that by them you possess eternal life. The scriptures will, children, uh, 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 beloved, give you eternal life. That's what God has designed in the scriptures. To give you eternal life. That's because the scriptures are going to lead you and I to someone. Let's see the next verse. The next verse says... These are the scriptures that testify about me. Yet, you refuse to come to me to have life. That is so sad. As Jesus is talking to the scribes and Pharisees, the doctors of the law, they knew the scriptures so well. And continually, every verse they read pointed them to who? To who? To Jesus. And yet, they refuse to come to Jesus to get eternal life. All we are studying, everything we study in the book of Daniel, the center must be what? Jesus Christ, church. The center must be, how can I live to please Jesus? I'm not planning to give anyone more information. I'm hoping that you and I can live better. Someone say amen. amen. That we can live more victorious, pleasing Jesus. Let's go and have a look at another portion of scripture. And I heard it this morning. Matthew 27. Because this is the final crux of the whole matter. 27, Matthew chapter 27, 39. Matthew 27, verse 39. Very interesting. Uh, 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 did I say Matthew 27? Yeah. I beg your pardon. Not Matthew 27, Matthew 24. I beg your pardon. 39. Matthew 24, 39. Am I in the wrong place? Wait a minute. Well, the, the verse went like this, and I think I can, I can safely um, 
Heaven and earth may pass away. What was that verse? 24, 25. 24, 35. What did you say? Matthew 24, 35. Matthew 24, 35. I'm sorry. 35. This is a very, very interesting verse, but it can be also found in the Old Testament. I've got the wrong, uh, 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 what's the name, here on my page. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Church, with just with that verse, that I think is the essence. Heaven and earth will pass away. That will come and go, but the Word of God today is our foundation. Amen. That's where we need to put our hope. That's where we need to put our trust is in what God said. Amen? Amen. And that's all we need to understand because, because that is the base of it and that is the rock church. Building on the rock, that is the essence of it. Today we're going to look at Daniel chapter 2. And we looked at Babylon, the area of Babylon. And what country would Babylon be in today? Iraq. Thank you very much. We're looking at this area, Babylon, uh, same area, along the Euphrates River. There's it there in the corner. Blue here, Iraq, Kuwait, that area there is the area we're looking at for our study today. Today we're looking at Daniel chapter 2. And when you go to turn to the book of Daniel, please, church. Daniel chapter 2. We're just going to look at the first line. Listen to what it says in Daniel chapter 2. And then you'll understand something interesting. <coughs> Daniel chapter 2. Listen to what it says. Daniel chapter 2 says, In the second year of his reign... Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled and he could not sleep. Now church, just reading the first line of the text, of the, of, of, of the chapter, tells you something. What year of study would Daniel be in? Hello? Come on now, that's not, that's not brain work. That is what? Simple. That he would be in his... Second year of study. If he were in the university in Babylon, Daniel would just be in the second year. He would never be considered a graduate yet. Understand? So you would never look. By the way, if you got sick, you realize there's something very wrong with you. Would you go to a student to ask him for a diagnose? Would you dare to go and ask a student? There's pastor there, we can go and ask pastor. Hey pastor, please, can you check me up here? I, I, I trust your word. Would you, would you do that? No. What, what would you do? You would go to somebody that you know or you believe is an expert. They got experience behind them. They got the studies behind them. They know something, right? You're not going to go to somebody that's in the second year, just started, and ask them for the advice. So this is the backdrop of the book of Daniel, chapter 2. So we already know, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams in Daniel's second year of study. Let's go and look at that. We're going to be deep into that today. Babylon is the world empire. Beautiful. By the way, for those that don't know, Nebuchadnezzar had reigned with his father. His father had reigned just before him, and together they were reigning for about four years. Father and son reigning for about four years. Nebuchadnezzar, this one tells us it's the second year, so now he's reigning alone in his second year. Daniel is in his second year study. I want you to remember that. This is the height of Babylon. Babylon as a city is a thriving city. They've conquered all the known world. 
Nebuchadnezzar is being done to Egypt. He's taken the best of Egypt. Israel, he's taken the best. He's been to all over and he's brought them all to I already told you about the, the hanging gardens of, of Babylon. His wife is pleased. She's walking around that garden thrilled to bits because he's even impressed her by building this thing. Let's move on. There's it. Now you need to understand something about Nebuchadnezzar. He must have had a, an idea from I don't know exactly where. But Nebuchadnezzar thought by putting the city over the, Euphr the Euphrates River, it would be a guarantee of a water supply. In fact, the gardens, the hanging gardens would be no problem. Get the water full supply in it, and that was it. The dream was made. Babylon will stand forever. In fact, do you know that God called this city by a name? And I'll show it to you as we move on. Daniel chapter 2. There's King Nebuchadnezzar. Wondering, thinking about this city of his. Dad is now off the scene. He is so ruler. He's got all the apprentices studying in the Babylonian universities. And now he lays down to rest. And God gives him a dream. I want to tell you, church, that Nebuchadnezzar is loved by God. I want to tell you, he's a heathen king. But the Bible says God loves him. Someone say amen. amen. Because you don't have to just be Christian. God is working with those out there. Amen. And, and that someone talked about the importance of Christmas. If you use this time as an evangelistic tool. If you use this time when everybody's singing, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and they're putting a star on the top of their Christmas trees, and they're going around with joy, use it for evangelism. Amen. And that's what we're going to learn today. Nebuchadnezzar here, loved by God, and now God's going to, he doesn't know God, by the way. He has no idea of the true God. But God is going to introduce him to himself. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. God is good, church. Amen. We are at best silly. You know on the train while you were coming here, or on the bus, or when you were walking, there was opportunity for you to tell somebody of Christ? Come on, church. There was an opportunity, but if you did not make the best of your opportunity, it was lost. God had a plan for you to witness for Him today on your way here. Someone say amen. amen. But you lost it. Be more open to it. Lord, is there anybody here that you want me to talk to? Because that's what we're going to learn here today. Look here, look here. Nebuchadnezzar has this dream. God is getting hold of him now. He dreams this dream, man, this impressive dream of an image. It's so impressive. He wakes up in the morning. Or rather, the Bible says he couldn't sleep after this dream. And what happens? Man. Something about that dream disturbed me last night. Have you ever had a dream like that? Yes. Have you ever had a dream that you woke up and you were disturbed? You probably went to work and you started asking people, you know, I had a funny dream last night. I dreamt about this and this, and they start giving you answers, right? Mm -hmm. they, they start giving, normally that's what you, you hear. So you dream about something and then somebody gives you a suggestion, maybe that was like this and this and this. But now the problem is with this king, he has this dream and he forgets it. But he knows, Suki, it is important. He knows this dream is important, but the problem is he cannot remember. 
And I know you've had that experience. I know you've had that experience because sometimes some things click and then you say, oh, I remember that now. Look at this, look at this kid. Can't remember. Wakes up in the morning, trouble. Something went important last night and I have forgotten. Now you know what? Something very interesting about these people, is the book of Ezekiel tells us this also. They were very superstitious. The Babylonians were a very superstitious people, just like the Chinese. Very, very intelligent, but very, very superstitious. And whenever they made a decision, it was always concerning the stars, concerning the, the water, the way things went. By the way, let me turn, let's turn in our Bibles. I'll give you an example. Turn in your Bible to Ezekiel 21. Example. Let me show you what I mean. Ezekiel 21. Just next to Daniel is Ezekiel. Ezekiel 21. Let me give you an idea of an idea of what I mean. Ezekiel 21 and verse 18. Listen to this. Ezekiel is the prophet. Remember I said about contemporary with Daniel. Okay, look here. What the Babylonians would do. This is about the Babylonians. Listen. Ezekiel chapter 21. And if you look at the top of the chapter, it says, what does it say at the top of the chapter? Babylon, God's sword of? In fact, God used the Babylonians to discipline his people. I told you that last week. But verse 21, look what it says. Sorry, verse um, 18, look what it says. The word of the Lord came to me, Ezekiel, son of man, make out two roads for the sword of the king of Babylon to take, both starting from the same country. Make a signpost where the road branches off to the city. Mark out one road for the sword to come against Rebah and the Amorites and another against Judah and fortify Jerusalem. Listen verse 21. For the king of Babylon will stop at the fork of, in the road, at the junction of the two roads, to seek air. Oh, oh. You know what's that? You know what's that, right? Okay. He will, in other words, he will look for signs. He will look in the stars. He will look at the thing. He will throw the bones. He will go to the crystal ball. He will look for a sign on which road to take. Look, look what the Bible says. Look. This is before the capture of Babylon, of Jerusalem, by the way. Look, look. Verse 21. He will cast lots with arrows. He will consult his idols. He will examine the liver. Hey. Where's, where's pa Pastor uh, Wesley? Where's Wesley? He's in the journal. It's very interesting. In some of the African tribes, they look in the liver of animals for signs. Cut the liver open if this is flowing that way and that's doing that. Then this is a good sign. They throw the bones in my country. They throw the bones. The bone is looking that, that, that person's bad. The bone is looking like that, that person. This is exactly what the Babylonians did. Every move they made, they consulted the, the spirits. I talked about the spirits. And look what, look here, what happens. The liver, right? Um, verse 22. In his right hand will come the lot for Jerusalem where he is to set up battering rams to give the command to slaughter, to sound the battle cry, to set battering rams against the gates, to build the ramp and to erect sign works. Let's see verse 23. It will seem like a false omen to those who are sworn allegiance to him, but he will remind them of their guilt to take them 
captive. So the simple point we're seeing that the Babylonians were a very, very superstitious people. Now, let's move on. Nebuchadnezzar wakes up. What do you think he's going to do first? Normally, whenever they have a dream, Chinese or Babylonian, what they do is they call the wise men in. Now, this is important because where is Daniel at this time? Daniel is a student in his second year of Babylonian college. So no one's going to bother with him. No one's going to bother calling them because they are too, too junior. A junior. And this is the same today in the universities. Anyone has a problem, they don't call students, they call the professors. Professors help us solve this problem. Now look here what happened, look. Then Nebuchadnezzar called in his wise men. Men, come. These are guys with experience. Now every time before Nebuchadnezzar, his father would have a dream, wake up, come to them and tell them the dream. Gentlemen, I dreamed about this. I dreamed about three sheep jumping over this and, and two trees. There were two trees. And then they said, oh, two trees, three sheep. Yeah, go on, go on, kid. Yeah, got it, got it. We got that one. They opened their big books. They started looking. Three sheep, uh -huh. two trees. Uh -huh. Yeah, king, that's what it means. King, your dream means this and that and that and that. They've been doing this for many months. Was no different now. When Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, this was not something different. The only problem was, when Nebuchadnezzar has this dream, his requirements are different. He says to them, gentlemen, I want you to tell me what dream I had last night. I know you know the meaning of it. King, we will know the meaning if you tell us the dream. And they're waiting. Waiting. Yes, King, go on, tell us the dream, we tell you the meaning. We've done it for your father, and now we're doing it for you. And King Nebuchadnezzar says, sorry. I don't know what I dream. <laughs> so if you know what my dream means, tell me what I dreamed. That's good. Doesn't it make sense? Yeah. Makes good sense, right? It makes perfect sense. If you know what the meaning of the dream is, tell me what the dream is. They're wise. They're wise. They always do this. You know what? Now God is doing something interesting. God is helping Nebuchadnezzar to understand that those that have counseled you have always misled. You. But wait a minute. Nebuchadnezzar says something. Let's go to Daniel. I will show you something. Nebuchadnezzar says something. Ezekiel Daniel. Here. He says, if you know the dream and the interpretation and you tell it to me, I will give you great re oh, You know in the past when they're doing this for dad, they just, dad tells them the dream, they tell the interpretation, and Nebuchadnezzar's father pays them. Yeah, good job. And they would get promoted in the, in the, in the school, in the Y, in the whatever you call it. The school of the wise men. They promoted, they different ranks and different levels and different groups. We're going to learn that. Look, gentlemen, tell me my dream. Tell us what the dream is. Look. I have had a dream and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. Mm. Oh, king! Flattery. You know, that always works. In Chinese we call it Pai Ma Pi. 
You just flatter somebody and maybe they will change their mind. Oh king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream and we will give you the interpretation. Hmm. That's easy. My decision. Look what happens here. Verse 4. Wait a minute. Check verse 4. Hmm. Verse 4. Then the astrologers. Who are the astrologers? Study the stars. The astrologers answered the king in Aramaic. O oh, king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream. Verse 5. The king replied to the astrologers. This is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut in pieces and your house is pulled down from its foundation. Now they know the king is serious. You don't tell me in a few days what I dream and what it means, I'm going to kill you guys. I'm killing all of you. The school of, of, of wise men all dead. Now where is Daniel now? Does he have any idea what's going on? No. No. That is important. But what do you think Daniel does always? Hello? Someone say, hello? Pray. And that church, we may not know what governments are talking about, but we still have access to God. Someone say, amen. And Daniel was a prayer, not when trouble comes only. He prays all the time. Someone say amen. amen. That's what we need to learn today. Prayer will help God find someone down here to talk to when troubles happen. You know the thing in, in America was said. Uh, that, that, what's the name? That massacre in America. But um, I learned, uh, Brother Ken, that at the same time in America, when that massacre happened, in China, a man took a sword or a knife or whatever he used, and he went and killed, or not killed, sorry, but wounded seriously about 20 kids in China. Same time. Same time. I don't know if I read this with you last week. If you go to Daniel chapter 1, the last few verses say that Daniel was given a gift. What gift did God give Daniel because of his faithfulness in health reform? What, was his, what gift God gave him? God gave him. Let's look at it, okay? Some of you are good. Let's look at it. Daniel chapter 1. Look here. Now, let's see. Verse 17. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. Verse 17. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all So God had prepared Daniel and then God gave the king a dream. There was preparation and the king has a dream. Because God wants to put the king in contact with his missionary. Amen. 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 And that's what's happening today, church. God wants to put you in contact with somebody. If you are waiting and ready and praying, God will make you great. Someone say amen. 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 But we 
need to be like Daniel Church. We need to find out why did God do this for him. Something we talked about last week precedes chapter 2. And that was the help message. Someone say amen. amen. That was preceding chapter 2. Let's go on here. My decision is firm. You shall be cut in pieces in your houses. However, if you tell me the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive. Now that's what they all wanted. <laughs> Give us the yes. gifts. Now, so King, please change your mind. Tell us the dream and we'll tell you what it means. Sorry, I don't know. Hmm. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, this is seriously important. This is seriously important. There is not a man on earth who can tell the king the matter. Hmm. Therefore, no king, they knew that already, no lord, no ruler has ever asked such of his subjects. So King Nebuchadnezzar, in other words, they're saying, King, you are crazy. No one's ever asked anybody a question like that. You must be crazy. How can you expect us to tell you what your dream means when you haven't even told us what your dream is? You're crazy, King. That's what they were simply saying to the King Nebuchadnezzar. You are crazy. Now look, oh. there is no other, oh I like this, you know, there is no other who can tell it to the king except the yes. whose dwelling is not with flesh. In other words, Nebuchadnezzar, you don't need man to tell you. You need to consult the and this is exactly what the God of heaven wants. Someone say amen, church. God will bring problems into your life so he can lead you to him. When he brings a problem, don't go and look for solutions by everybody else. Go to Sometimes God makes us sick. He lies us on our backs so that we can look up. And Nebuchadnezzar is brought to that place, troubled in his mind, because God wants to bring him close. Look at this. Except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is just mad now. He's mad, and one thing he says, the Bible says, kill him all. Starting from where? Start from the old, go down, and even the students, kill them all. Whole lot of liars, kill them all. And that's where Nebuchadnezzar comes in contact with Daniel. Remember chapter 1 said after three years they would test them and found them ten times better. Haven't been tested yet. You know why? Because the test would come after how many years? Three. Three years. This is only the second year. You with me, church? Sometimes we read it, but we don't. Things don't click. Things don't seem to click. Nebuchadnezzar met Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before the end of their three-year study. That's simply what the Bible is saying. Let's go on, I'll show you something. Kill them all. And this is where Daniel comes on, into the seed. Hmm. Now there I asked you a question. This is a student in his second year of studying as a doctor. You have a terminal disease or illness or your child has that and you go consult this guy to help you find a solution. Is that possible? Second year student, him. Starting to be a doctor, at least he's going there. Will you ask him? No way. No way, no one that I know would go and ask a student to help them with a serious problem of their child. But that's what it would be like to go and ask Daniel, a student. Look, 
Or would you go and ask him? Yes. Why? You think he's more experienced? He, he looks more experienced. What makes you think so? Ah! <laughs> exactly it. Man looks at the outward appearance. I will say so. But God looks at the We would almost definitely, in fact, we wouldn't even pray about it. We would not even pray about it. Or if we did pray and God said, I want you to go to, to Minchuan University and go and find a man by the name of Wesley there. He's, he's, he's a second year uh, 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 business student. Go and ask him what you should do. You say, you're crazy. He's not even a doctor. Why should I go and ask him? Right? That's where we are, church. But God was going to lead them to a second year student. Let's go see some of these. Oh church, we're into it now. Let's go. Uh, the book of Amos 3, 7. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. After Daniel, you come to Amos. Da uh, uh, um, after um, Daniel. Hosea, Joel, Amos, yes. 3 7 and write it down this is important verse 3 says surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants the prophet so before God does anything he's going to tell the prophet and is Daniel a prophet now yes. chapter 1 said yes he is so God is going to make known to Daniel the problem of the King. Some would say amen. amen. God is consistent. Amen. Let's see the next one. Numbers 12, 6. That's the story of Miriam and Aaron. Verse 6 says, God says, If I have a prophet, I will make my, my, myself known through them in visions and in dreams. Numbers chapter 12, verse 6. Write it down. Deuteronomy 29, 29, my favorite. For surely the Lord God does, sorry, the secret things belong to the Lord God. The secret things belong to who, church? God. To God. And those things that are revealed belong to us and our children forever. That's Deuteronomy 29, 29. And Isaiah 64, I want us to read it. Hmm. Isaiah 46, I beg your pardon. Isaiah 46, I want to read this one. Because this is the foundation of the church. God is good. 46, verse 8, 9, and 10. Hmm, this one is perfect. This one is a perfect one. Isaiah. And take note. The above of the chapter is what? 46. The above 46. What's the title of the chapter? God's of Babylon. Once again? God's, God's of, of There again. Isaiah is talking to who? The Babylonians. Listen to this. Verse 8 says, Remember this. Fix it in mind. Take it to heart. You rebels. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I Please. Amen. Amen. Write it down. That is the secret, church. The God that you serve today is still able to do that. Amen. Let's move on. Hmm, I like that verse. Chapter 46. Deuteronomy 14 to 16. Uh, Daniel 14 to 16. I want us to read some of these. Let's see. Daniel chapter 2, 14. To 16. Now, Daniel from the university runs to the man that's given the command to kill everybody. Look what he says. Look. Verse 14 says, Verse 
13 says, So the decree was issued to put the wise men to death. And men were sent to look for Daniel and his friends to put them to death. When, verse 14, when Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the, the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm interested to know, church, how on earth did Daniel know where and who to go to when the command was given? I want you to think about it. The command from the king is going to kill everybody. And Daniel, but before they kill anybody, Daniel finds them. Daniel begins to talk to them because the command comes, kill them all. Look what the Bible says. Look. Look what it says. 14. When Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tech. Now that wisdom and tech is important. You may be right about something. You may be right on the subject. You may be right about it. But you still need what? Wisdom and tech. You may be right about the Sabbath and at, at work you talk to them about the Sabbath. But you still need Wisdom and don't just go there with your pictures and say, Well, I'm right, you wrong. Daniel didn't do that. Daniel knew he had the God of heaven on his side, but he still needed what? Wisdom and someone say amen. Amen. Because we need to learn something here, church. You may be right about it, and I'm talking to my friend Kent here. You may be right about something. But you still need wisdom here. The Bible says in Proverbs is gentleness. Gentleness even when you are right. You still need, I understand, yes, hmm? talk. Right about something does not mean you got to stand up with your chest like this. <laughs> right about something does not mean you have to be all so strong about it. No. Wisdom and tact means gentleness and your approach. Amen? Amen? We're learning now because Daniel, I'll tell you something, if he went with the idea that God of heaven is on my side and goodness, hey, Larry, what do you think? You can't do this. God said so. <laughs> Who put up Babylon? Who put up Babylon? It was God that put up Babylon. And God was working with the leader of Babylon at this point. And God was going to require his servants to be gentle and tactful. Tact is a very important one. Let's go on here. Verse 16 says. 16 says. At this, Daniel went to the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. I like Daniel. You know I like it? Because Daniel is so, he knew where to go first. If Daniel went to the king first, the decree is out. Some people already died. So he went this way and then that way. He went to Ariok, who was given the command, and then he talks to him, wait, let me talk to the king first. And at least, at least the king, if the king's going to call Ariok back, at least no one is dead. Someone say amen. Now why? Why is this important? Because if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you find out love does not rejoice in... Love does not rejoice when somebody else got what they deserve. Love is gentle and love always protects. Amen. Amen. That's what 1 Corinthians 13 says. So Daniel wanted to save them from the sword and also save them from eternal death. Amen. Amen. And then he goes to the king alone. I, I like this. You know why? 
And I like this. He goes to, to Ariel, please go talk to the king. And they go together and the king, please give us some time. And then Daniel goes home. And what does he do when he gets home? You know what he does? No, no, no. He calls someone. He calls his three friends. Oh, I like this. Where two or three come together in my name. Amen? Amen. I am. You don't have to go alone. You don't have to be praying about an issue alone. Someone say amen. amen. Call those of like mind to worry God with you. Daniel goes and he calls Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the three, four of them pray. Hmm, I like it. If you have a problem of great consequence, call those of like mind and pray about it. Someone say amen. amen. Because there is wisdom in the, in the gathering of God's people, church. There's power. Thank you. There's power. That's why I don't understand, you know. At the end of the Sabbath, when we say the any request, so, so meager, we just... That's the power. When God's people come together in the afternoon, that's the power hour. But there's so few. We, so, we don't want to bother God, you know. God wants you to come to Him in faith. Amen? Amen. And Daniel gets Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they pray. Oh, I like that, Pastor. They pray. The hey? It is always the few. Oh, my goodness. They pray, and that night God reveals to who? Now, Daniel had to go to sleep. He goes to sleep, he has a dream. Chapter 1 says visions and dreams, huh? He wakes up in the morning, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, thank you for praying for me. Because chapter 1 already told you that Daniel was given a gift. Amen? Amen. If somebody's got the gift, you better get hold of this person and together you can pray. How did you know that was a Huh? How did you know that was a Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen? Amen. When you're going to bed, Lord, I need the answer for the king's dream. And you get the dream. You better believe that when you wake up, the dream you had is the dream. True. Someone say amen. amen. And, and here Daniel goes to the king. Oh, I like it. He goes to King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar, let me talk with you. In fact, the Bible says something interesting. The person that came for Daniel to take him to Nebuchadnezzar goes and tells Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, I found a man. I got someone from the tribe of Judah. Here, here's he here. Did he find Daniel? Or did Daniel find him? See, we always want the praise, you know. Man, I did it. I found I found the guy that helped the king. Your full promotion. Everybody says. No, 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 no. And Daniel goes into the king. I like this part. Look. There's Daniel pray. Church, this is the secret of your success. Pray. Amen. Amen. Pray. Pray about anything. Pray about everything. And if you don't know how to pray, get the brethren around you and just pray. Prayers talking to God as to a friend. We pray too little, church. We pray too little. You and I, we need more prayer. Amen. 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 Oh, look at this. Daniel goes and check. I like this story, man. Pastor, look. And he goes and gets that dream, and he dreams everything to say, by faith, kid. Don't go and start saying, oh, I don't know if this is the dream. Hmm. I went to bed last night and, and I prayed and God, I don't know. Uh, 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 uh. You go to the king with the confidence. What dream I had, that's the dream God showed me. Amen. Amen. And he, look, 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 look. Amen. And this is what Daniel says. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers, 
You have given me wisdom and <laughs> You know I like it, Kenty, because he wakes up and he thanks the Lord. He doesn't even know it. I'm not sure it's just a dream. I'm not sure if this is the dream. Maybe it's not the dream. No, no, no. He knows that is the dream. For by faith, church, without faith it is impossible to please God. If we're going to live a Christian life, we need what? Faith. 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 Amen. Let's move on. Do not execute the wise men of Babylon. Take me to the king and I will interpret. He tapered his dream for him. And there he goes to Nebuchadnezzar. You know, I can imagine Nebuchadnezzar sitting on his throne thinking, <laughs> no one can ever do what I asked. And there this little uh, 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 undergrad comes there and says, so, um, um, hey, I know you. I know you. Okay, what do you have to say? King, I like, I like Daniel's opening speech for the king. The secret, king, which the king has demanded. I like this. Look, look, Daniel. I tell you, if it were me, I would go to the king and say, King, I definitely can tell you. I had a dream last night. I can tell you. But I'm glad it was me. I'm glad it wasn't me. Amen, Jed? Because sometimes we take too much credit. For what God has done. I'm telling you, Brother Ken, I'm glad it wasn't me. Look at what Daniel says. Daniel says, what the king has asked the wise men and astrologers, the magicians and the soothsayers, cannot declare to you. The king, king, they cannot do it. To kill them is really, you are stupid. Because they can't. How can you expect them to know the answer? Look at Daniel, look, look. But, <laughs> in other words, Daniel is saying, I can not do it. I, I, that, that is humility, church. That is humility. When nothing of, of, of I comes in, you know. Normally it would be, oh, I definitely can tell the king that. No, 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 no. That Daniel is really pushing it all to who? He wants Nebuchadnezzar to understand. You got to have a relationship with God. Look at this, look. There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. And he has made known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the... What's another word for latter days? What will be in the future? Oh, I like that. Yeah. In fact, if you go to the book of Timothy, you're going to see the same word there. Look, look, look. Oh, look at this. For I am God, and there is no other I am God and there is none like me. Church, the God we serve is still the same. Amen. Someone say amen. amen. He doesn't change. If he was like that for Daniel, do you think he's like that for you, Sister Mickey? But man, why don't we believe that? Why don't we believe that? As for you, O king, but oh, this is Daniel now. Now look at here. My mind goes to this. The king is sitting on his throne like this. Like this. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Impressive. Mm. Now Daniel starts. Look at Daniel now. Starting. Daniel just this little guy down there and the king. As for you, O king, the thoughts came to your mind while you are on your bed about what would come to pass after this. Hmm. Yeah, go on. No impression. Remember the king cannot remember anything. He's what? what? What's that when you can't remember? What do you call it? Amnesia. He's got amnesia. He, he, he cannot remember. Now Daniel is trying to impress him. Like the wise men impressed him, but uh, the king. 
and he who reveals secrets has made known to you what will be. Still no bell rings. Nothing rings. Look. Hmm. You, O king, were watching, and behold, you saw a great image. image, a great statue. Now, this church is very important, because when you go to chapter 3, you're going to see the same thing. This image you saw, king, was beautiful. Look. And then while you were looking, king, this image's head was fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and its thighs of bronze. Now, every part of that image is important, church. Why that image has two arms is important. Why it has two legs is important. Why it has ten toes is important. That image is important. Amen. Now, look at the details of it. Look. Its chest and arms were silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet, partly iron and, and, and partly clay. You watched, King. Now, by now, do you think he's got it back? Yeah. Huh? Do you think he's got it back? Something's back now. Now the king that was sitting like this, just, um, mm, yeah. Go on. Mm, he's now sitting like this. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 I, I, uh, 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 yeah, 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 that's it, go on, go on, yeah, yeah. You see, he's, he's now, he's now just, sometimes the same with us, church. Same with us. When we have a relationship going with Christ, reading the Bible is going to make you sit at the end of your chair. Sometimes you just hear it and, oh yeah, I know that, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, stop, uh -huh. yeah, the stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you have an encounter with Christ, the one of the word, you, every time you hear it, your ears will thrill. Amen. And the same with Nebuchadnezzar. When Daniel was starting to talk to him, now it starts, da, 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 da. now he's, yeah, go on, Daniel, go on. Yeah, 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 good job, good job, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, they, they got to tell you. King, King, relax your heart. <laughs> you got to get excited about the word, church. Amen. Someone say amen. amen. We are soldiers. I worry about us. <laughs> the same, I, I travel a bit, you know, the same. But when we're watching the boxing, dun, 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 and the pastor's going like this, knock him on the gate. The pastor can't keep still. <laughs> The elder can't keep down. When the guy's getting knocked down on the roof, the, the elder like a... <laughs> Comes the Bible like this. <laughs> and we say we love the Lord. You're kidding. The things of the Lord we don't love. Because I tell you, I see Nebuchadnezzar sitting on that chair. And as the words of Daniel were going through his head... <clears throat> Then you saw somebody that was interested in the Word of God. Hmm. Hmm. Church, something's wrong with us when we don't get excited about the things of God. Something is definitely wrong. Look here. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands. I can imagine Nebuchadnezzar saying, What does that mean? Daniel says, Wait. You wanted to know the dream? I'm going to tell you the dream. What does that mean? No, 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 wait. And Daniel continues. Calm, church. When you got the truth, you are calm. Amen. A calm excitement, you know. Hmm? Look at this. Look. Which struck the image on the feet of iron and clay and broke them to pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, the gold were crushed together. And became like chaff of the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image, amen, church. Amen. Amen. That's everything to me. Amen. In the middle of everything, I will pray. Pray about anything. Pray about everything. 
And if you don't know how to pray, get the brethren around you and just pray. Prayer is talking to God as to a friend. We pray too little, church. We pray too little. You and I, we need more prayer. Amen. Amen. Oh, look at this. Daniel goes and check. I like this story, man. That's the look. And he goes and gets that dream, and he dreams everything to say, by faith, kid. Don't go and start saying, oh, I don't know if this is the dream. Hmm. I went to bed last night, and, and I prayed, and God, I don't know. Uh, 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 uh. You go to the king with the confidence. What dream I had, that's the dream God showed me. Amen. Amen. And he, look, 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 look. Amen. And this is what Daniel says. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and <laughs> You know I like it, Kenty, because he wakes up and he thanks the Lord. Amen. He doesn't even know it. I'm not sure it's just the dream. I'm not sure if this is the dream. Maybe it's not the dream. No, no, no. He knows that is the for by faith, church, without faith it is impossible to please God. If we're going to live a Christian life, we need what? Faith. faith. Amen. Let's move on. Do not execute the wise men of Babylon. Take me to the king and I will interp interpret his dream for him. And there he goes to Nebuchadnezzar. You know, I can imagine Nebuchadnezzar sitting on his throne thinking, <laughs> No one can ever do what I ask. And there this little uh, 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 undergrad comes there and starts to, um, um, hey, I know you. I know you. Okay, what do you have to say? King, I like, I like Daniel's opening speech for the king. The secret, king, which the king has demanded, I like this, look, look, Daniel. I tell you, if it were me, I would go to the king and say, King, I definitely can tell you. I had a dream last night. I can tell you. But I'm glad it wasn't me. I'm glad it wasn't me. Amen, Jack? Because sometimes we take too much credit for what God has. I'm telling you, Brother Ken, I'm glad it wasn't me. Look at what Daniel says. Daniel says, what the king has asked the wise men and astrologers, the magicians and the soothsayers cannot declare to you. The king, king, they cannot do it. To kill them is really, you are stupid. Because they can't. How can you expect them to know the answer? Look at Daniel, look, look. But, in other words, Daniel is saying, I cannot do it. I, I, that, that is humility, church. That is humility. When nothing of, of, of I comes in, you know. Normally it would be, oh, I definitely can tell the king that. No, 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 no. That Daniel is really pushing it all to who? He wants Nebuchadnezzar to understand. You got to have a relationship with God. Look at this, look. There is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and he has made known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the... What's another word for latter days? What will be in the future? Oh, I like that. Yeah. In fact, if you go to the book of Timothy, you're going to see the same word there. Look, look, look. Oh, look at this. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Church, the God we serve is still the same. Amen. Someone say amen. amen. He doesn't change. If he was like that for Daniel, do you think he's like that for you, Sister Mickey? But man, why don't we believe that? Why don't we believe that? As 
for you, O king. But this is Daniel now. Now look at here. My mind goes to this. The king is sitting on his throne like this. Like this. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Impressive. Mm. Now Daniel starts. Look at Daniel now. Starting. Daniel just this little guy down there and the king. As for you, O king, the thoughts came to your mind while you were on your bed about what would come to pass after this. <laughs> yeah, go on. No impression. Remember the king cannot remember anything. He is what? what? What's that when you can't remember? What do you call it? Amnesia. He's got amnesia. He, he, he cannot remember. Now Daniel is trying to impress him. Like the wise men impressed him, but uh, the king. And he who reveals secrets has made known to you what will be. Still no bell rings. Nothing rings. Look. Hmm. You, O oh king, were watching. And behold, you saw a great image. Image. A great statue. Now this church is very important. Mm -hmm. Because when you go to chapter 3. You're going to see the same thing. This image you saw king was beautiful. Look. And then while you were looking king. This image's head was fine gold. Its chest and arms of silver. Its belly and its thighs of bronze. Now every part of that image is important church. Why that image has two arms is important. Why it has two legs is important. Why it has ten toes is important. That image is important. Amen. Now look at the details of it. Look. Its chest and arms were silver. Its belly and thighs of bronze. Its legs of iron. Its feet. Partly iron and, and, and partly clay. You watched, King. Now, by now, do you think he's got it back? Yeah. Huh? Do you think he's got it back? Yeah. Something's back now. Now the king that was sitting like this, just, um, mm, yeah. Go on. Mm, he's now sitting like this. Huh? Uh, uh, yeah, 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 I, I got that. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 that's it. Go on, go on, yeah, yeah. You see, he's, he's now, he's not with just... Sometimes the same with us, church. Same with us. When we have a relationship going with Christ, reading the Bible is going to make you sit at the end of your chair. Sometimes you just hear it and, oh yeah. I know that, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you have an encounter with Christ, the one of the word, you every time you hear it, your ears will thrill. And the same with Nebuchadnezzar. When Daniel was starting to talk to him, now it starts. Now he's, yeah, go on, Daniel, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, good job, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they got to tell you, that King, King, relax your heart. You got to get excited about the word, church. Someone say amen. amen. We are soldiers. I worry about us. <laughs> The same, I, I travel a bit, you know, the same. But when we're watching the books, and the pastor's going like this, knock him on the gate. The pastor can't keep still. The elder can't keep down. When the guy's getting knocked down on the roof, the, the elder like this. Comes the Bible like this. And we say we love the Lord. You're kidding. The things of the Lord we don't love. Because I tell you, I see Nebuchadnezzar sitting on that chair. And as the words of Daniel were going through his head, Daniel saw somebody that was interested in the word of God. Hmm. Hmm. Church, something's wrong with us when we don't get excited about the things of God. 
Something is definitely wrong. Look here. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands. I can imagine Nebuchadnezzar saying, what does that mean? Daniel says, wait. You wanted to know the dream? I'm going to tell you the dream. What does that mean? No, 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 wait. And Daniel continues. Calm, church. When you got the truth, you are calm. Amen. And calm excitement, you know. Hmm? Look at this, look which struck the image on the feet of iron and clay and broke them to pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, the gold were crushed together and became like chaff of the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image, amen, church. Amen. Amen. That's everything to me. Amen. In the middle of everything, I will find something about Christ. That stone is the second coming of Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh. You add been this, aren't you? Yeah. There's the, 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 the first indications of the second coming. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Nebuchadnezzar by this time can't sit still. What does that mean? Daniel says, wait. Wait. When you're studying the word, you need order. Someone say amen. amen. You can't just be asking questions. And this is wise counsel. When you meet someone on the train, on the bus, someone who's interested in the word, they ask you a question. Do what Christ did after the resurrection. You can talk about that verse. But it's best to take them from Moses and all the prophets in a systematic way. Because you can start Text, 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 you confuse people. Tell them, stop. I will have a Bible study with you. Don't just start, da, 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 da. it's useless. They will know that this person is an ordered person. Don't just start rattling, rattling. You confuse them. They ask you a question on the train while you're reading your Bible. Get the address. You can read that scripture. You can talk with them there. But you must be heading somewhere with this talk. Someone say amen. Don't just leave them in the air. Because when you leave them, the devil makes a mockery of that. You with me, church? Yes. You've got to take them somewhere. Just like uh, 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 Th Thomas, remember? The Ethiopian eunuch. What was his name? Philip. Philip. Sorry. You've got to be taking them somewhere, church. Don't just be haphazard. You just throw them verses. You need to order them so that in their minds they can think orderly. Someone say amen. amen. This is what Daniel did. Every time Nebuchadnezzar wants to interject, Daniel says, King, I'll give you a chance. King, let me tell you what you dreamed. And I'm going to tell you in every detail so that you know the God of heaven doesn't just work by, by launchy parts out. <laughs> Everything must be ordered. Amen? That's what Daniel did with the king. I want to show you. Look, 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 look. Huh. I'm living. Hmm. The story, or rather the dream, was to start in 600 BC and end at the second coming of Christ. Someone say amen. amen. Now let me tell you something, church. In the book of Daniel, we're going to learn three categories. There's the category for the elementary school student. There's the category for the senior high school student. And there's the category for the University student. These three categories God has designed in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel chapter 2 is for the elementary school student. Did you hear what I said? If you are just 
and wanting to understand who's going to rule in the end, the book of Daniel 2 is just for you. Do you understand? You understand that? That's why Nebuchadnezzar had this dream because God was new to him. You're going to go on when we go to Daniel chapter 7. You're going to understand why it's for senior high school students. Because in the book of Daniel chapter 7, the same as Daniel chapter 2, there's more detail. Are you with me, church? Are you with me? Yes. When we go on to Daniel chapter 8 and 9, the same dream, but you're going to find the detail now becomes complex. Same. Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 8 and 9, all are the same span of time, but with more detail. Understand, church? Now look at this. From 606 BC to eternity. In other words, your day, today, is included in And if God were to show Nebuchadnezzar a panoramic view of what he saw, you and your day would be included in there. You with me, church? Because you are not here yet. You are not here yet. You are before eternity. Let me show you something interesting. And I'm going to start to continue next time. Now, while Daniel finished, oh, I like this one. Nebuchadnezzar by this time is sweating. He's in pain. You want to just check. tell me what it means. Now, Daniel says, Nebuchadnezzar, you are that head of <laughs> By this time, you think the whole dream came to Nebuchadnezzar. Hello, church. Yes. By this time, it's fully in his head. He's, he's, he's reversed amnesia. Now everything is there. Now all he needs now is for the wise men to take over. Where do you think the wise men are? Where do you think they are now? Oh no. I will guarantee you the wise men are there. Because God doesn't do what he does in secret. God wants them all to come to a knowledge of the truth. Someone say amen. amen. And the wise men, as they listen, they look at Daniel, they can't imagine. They ask themselves, Was, who's this young man? Who is this? Who is the God of the Israelites? Who and in this whole rumble in the in the in the temple of Babylon or in the city of Babylon is an inquiry after the true God. Someone say Amen, Church. Amen. I want you to understand that it's not happening in a in a little closet. I want you to understand that they in this in the in the presence of of King Nebuchadnezzar are all the wise men. Church. If his people that are called by his name will humble themselves and pray, you and I will be great in the land of Taiwan. God wants to let the people know we don't have television. We don't have radio. You are his witnesses. Someone say amen. amen. Come on, church. On the train, in the factory, you are the one. Hmm, look at this, look at this. You are the head of gold, Nebuchadnezzar. And I tell you something, Nebuchadnezzar may have been thrilled to bits. But that thrill comes soon after because only one line is dedicated to Nebuchadnezzar. You are the head of gold. Look what happens, look. But let's go to our Bibles, 38. Look, chapter, Daniel chapter 2, the 38. Look at this, look, look. Chapter 2, verse 38. And it says here, You, O 
king of the king of kings, the God of heaven, oh my goodness, the God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. In your hands he has placed mankind and the beast of the field and the birds of the air over them all. You are that head of Lord. Now Nebuchadnezzar understands his relationship now to the God of heaven and all that is in his possession. That's exactly what God wants to do with us, church. Some of us don't know who God is yet. God is not one to be, to be trifled with. God is not one for you to make promises and break them tomorrow. God is the great God of the universe, church. Nebuchadnezzar was the greatest king and there Daniel, the simple servant, God's servant, is telling him, King, you are and you have responsibilities. Do you know after this, Nebuchadnezzar was troubled. After this, Nebuchadnezzar had two forces fighting now in him. After this, Nebuchadnezzar was determined, I want to serve God. But within him for years he had been serving who? The devil. After this, Nebuchadnezzar caught, and by the way, church, when you come to Christ with all your heart, the battle only begins. You don't know how come you love what you, you're supposed to hate, and you hate what you're supposed to love. The battle only begins when you give your heart to Christ. I don't know how come some of us Christians think, when I come, since I've come to Jesus, man, I've got so many problems. What did you think you were coming to? Since you came to Christ, yes, because the devil hates Jesus. And if you give your heart to Christ, he's going to hate you. Look at this. Let's finish up now. You are the head of gold. Look, and quickly the scene changes. Look, look what happens. Verse 30, 30, um, here. Verse 39. In fact, you know something so interesting? In so many years, Daniel was able to sum it up in just two lines. History you could write about Babylon would cover books, but Daniel just put it in two lines. Two lines. And immediately Daniel changes the subject and Daniel goes to the next kingdom. Because God is not trying to flatter you. God is not trying to flatter Nebuchadnezzar. God is simply telling Nebuchadnezzar, I put you where you are and you have responsibilities. And the same I'll say to the church. You are in Taiwan because God has allowed you here. You have responsibilities here. Mm, is that image. Nebuchadnezzar is not happy about that because the head of gold is just a small little head. You compare the head to the body. Look, look, look. That's just small. He wants to know what's going on after. And God tells him, listen, sir. The head is the most important. Somebody asked me the question, Brother Greg, where was China at this time? China at this time was growing. Small little states here and there. But they were coming together. They are not reckoned here. Because they don't affect God's people. The Chinese never ever took the Israelites captive. And, and Brother Leo asked me the question, what about the East? Brother Leo, East of Israel would be Babylon. East of Israel would be the area of Babylon. 
So in any way that way, it could be China. In fact, uh, Isaiah 49 talks about China in the chapter, talks about its wall. That same direction. So I don't know what he's talking about, Babylon or, or China. Now let's go on. That's Babylon, beautiful church. So beautiful and so impressive that God names another city after this city. In the book of Revelation, when we get there, you're going to understand why. Babylon is just not a haphazard thing. Babylon is an organized thing. The main idea is to bring cultures together. That's the idea of it. So we're going to stop here. Hmm. Head of gold is Babylon. I'm going to stop here from next week. I will continue from this one here. 605 to 539. Any questions at this point, church? Any questions? Mm. My teacher would tell me no question is a big question. <laughs> yeah, when it's right. When you don't have any questions, that's a big question. I must tell you something, church. When I first was interested in the Seventh day Adventist message, the prophecies of the book of Daniel was the first thing that caught my attention. The book of Daniel was the first thing. I didn't fall in love with Christ. I was interested in how things could be so systematic and pre-spoken before the heaven could happen. That was really my interest. And it was the book of Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, that really caught my interest. It was after that... After I understood the holistic thing of history, that I came to love and trust in Jesus. And I think that's the same way that God worked with Nebuchadnezzar. God had shown Nebuchadnezzar historical fact before it even rolled out. And then Nebuchadnezzar would understand that truly there is a God in heaven. Next week we're going to continue. Your homework class is... No, oh, sorry. Your homework, uh, 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 student is Daniel chapter, Daniel chapter two and three. Please read it. You can't be so busy. In fact, I can show you. The servant of the Lord said, "These are things we must be studying." So find time to read Daniel chapter two and Daniel chapter three. I can't go through all the details. Please, church, is that right? Okay? Yeah, yes, you promise? You promise? Please, and we'll enjoy it, I'll go faster. Some of you are just looking at And I know that if you read it, you'll be able to say, oh, I, I got it. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay? Let's move on. Where's we going to stop here? Head of gold. I don't think I should leave this opportunity. The point of Daniel chapter 2. Right through the book of Daniel, we're going to find one thing. That Daniel is simply directed, directing men and women that God is still in control. God has a, a reckoning with nations, church. God has a, 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 a listing of what the nations are doing. And this church... We must understand. Nebuchadnezzar, we're going to be learning next week what Daniel told him and still what happened after. We're going to be learning about that. But this one I want to show you, church. 
My mind is brought to a story that just brings out that in a beautiful way. This is a lawyer in India. Actually, one of the best lawyers in India. Very wise man. This is India. India, one of the most populated cities in the world, or rather countries in the world. Now in India, a few years ago, because they wanted to try to bring the court or make the court and health facilities accessible to, to the people, they decided they would use buses as courtrooms. I guess it was one of this guy's hopes. They used the buses, they took the buses, they took out the seats, and they made the buses into courthouses. Now you need to understand, in India they don't have a, a set-up system like us. Therefore buildings would not suffice there. Population too much. But the bus they could drive down the street, put it pocket in a place, and the people could come for judgment or, or cases to be settled in the community. There's the bus system in India. They would take one of these old buses, empty it out, and that's the courtroom. On it they would write, courtroom for today. Tomorrow you may not find the courtroom there. It's going to be in another area. So all cases would come and they would decide the case at the bus. The lawyer would be sitting inside. If you want to choose other lawyers, you can choose the judge is inside. Cases quickly decided. He'll hear it, a little of it. Decided. Cases. One day. You need to understand something. In India, one of the great things there is the bicycle. Just like in the Philippines. The bicycle. And, and little boys would get on the bicycle as a gang. And they would go down the, the, the Indian street. And because it's so crowded in some places, but some places are bare and empty. And these bicycles, they would just whistle. And they would ride out. And everybody would just split out. And while they are doing that, these boys on the bicycles would grab bags and ride on. While these boys were doing this, the lawyer was walking down one of the Indian streets. And he came to a street here, T-shaped street. And the bicycles were coming, and they were just racing down. And the lawyer standing at the corner, looked down there, looked up there, and saw the garbage truck come down. In fact, the garbage trucks in India were popular. Because the dead at night would die and they would just take their bodies, put them in the truck. Going down. No burial sites. And the bicycles are coming down and the garbage truck is coming and this lawyer sees the bicycle guys coming down. And the last one would never make it. If he decided to go across the road, that garbage truck would hit him flat. The lawyer dived out and pushed the boy off the bike. He fell onto the road and he got up cursing the lawyer. Who do you think you are? And gets on his bicycle. The lawyer said, and just as the lawyer is about to talk, the garbage truck goes room. The lawyer tries to tell him, I saved you from the truck. I don't care who you saved me from. He gets on his bicycle and he joins his buddies. A week later, that gang was caught. A week later, that gang of bicycle riders was called. Where's Tegal, please? They were caught and brought to the bus court. All of them were riding, stand, standing near the, the bus, ran, led into the bus, and they... Hey, and walking into the bus comes the guy that was pushed off his bicycle. And the judge... He's sitting there and he says, I know that judge, I know that judge, but that, that, I know him. And he's so excited because he thinks he knows the judge. The judge says, please keep him quiet. Don't look that judge. And the cases came with all these boys, one by one, and he comes here. 
I know you judge. The judge says, I don't want to hear you. Be quiet. I know you judge. Hmm. I know you too. On the road, I pushed you off your bicycle. When a garbage truck could have killed you. I was your savior there. You got up from the floor and you cursed me. I saved you, but you cursed me. Now, I am your judge. Be quiet. Church, the point of Daniel 2, the point of Daniel 7, is for you to understand that right now, He is your judge. Your, sorry, your Savior. Right now, while Christ is there, you can come. Right now, while He's saving you from disaster, while He's hoping that you come and give Him your heart, He is your Savior. When He comes as a stone, He's going to be your Church. What will it be, church? Will you give him your heart as your savior? Please stand. Please stand. Will you give Christ your heart as your savior? I must tell you, Nebuchadnezzar came to the realization, this must be a change in my life. You've known this for years. You've known what Nebuchadnezzar learned, and it thrilled Nebuchadnezzar. How come it's not thrilling you? I know it thrilled you before. Once before, this thing thrilled you. But today, I know that. And that's the problem, church. The problem is, you know about the sun, right? If you put the sun, you put butter, and you put clay under the sun. This is our testimony, church. Clay and butter. The sun melts the butter, but the clay becomes hard. Christ has given you an opportunity today. Same things Nebuchadnezzar heard. Do you want to give him your heart? Yes or no? Church, you've got to make that soberly. I made my decision. I want to follow Christ. Whether you come or not, I want to follow Christ. And Nebuchadnezzar, I can tell you now, I'm going to study it with you, but I'm telling you now, Nebuchadnezzar will be saved. And when the stone comes, and Nebuchadnezzar is raised, he will go to heaven in the first resurrection. The book of Daniel tells us that. This was the first introduction of, of Jesus to Nebuchadnezzar. Do you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, yes or no? Yes. Let us pray. Oh, Jesus. The first time you came, no one was ready. But when you come again the second time, we want to be ready. Do I have a witness, church? We want to be ready. We want to be ready today, Lord. We want to be ready today that if anything should happen to us, if a gunman should come in here and mow us down, we can say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Bless your people, Lord. Help us to make our calling and election sure. Help us to understand that we can settle this. Please bless your people today. That our conversation may be on heavenly things. That as we eat and talk, we may talk as the center, Christ our Savior. Amen.